Hi everybody, welcome back to Cisco Live 2023. We're here at the Mandalay Bay Conference Center. It's pretty big, probably about 20,000 people here. I'm Dave Vellante. This is the analyst panel. Myself, John Furrier, Zias Caravalla is back, principal at ZK Research. Zias and I dropped a breaking analysis last week entitled Cisco Needs to Simplify, Here's How. We're going to unpack what Cisco announced today. Z, good to see you, thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's great, great to be here. By the way, here. this might be the largest expo hall I've seen at a Cisco Live. I've been coming to these since yeah, 98, and I think this is the biggest one. 20,000, so, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a good number. Every seat it was, was pretty packed, packed in the keynote. Yeah. Definitely. All right, so how'd they do? I mean, we challenged Cisco, um, dropped it, you and I met Friday, dropped it Saturday. Yep. Got some interesting feedback, you know, from both sides. Yep. Right, and I think I think it was very fair. But how would you grade them? How'd they do? Uh, I thought very well. If I give them, a, if you want an actual letter yeah, grade, sure, um, it'd probably be a B. There's a, there's a lot of it. While I think their vision, <laughs> you know, is great. <laughs> that's, uh, a, that's an A coming from you, man. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, the tough professor. But no, no, explain, defend well, that. Well, because uh, I think their vision's outstanding. Right, they want to create these. Uh, Clouds for security, networking, they have one for WebEx already, full stack observability. I believe they'll probably build one for sustainability sometime down the road. Uh, but those are visions, right? And, and they have to take steps towards them. So I can't give them an A unless they're there, right? And so uh, while it's an aspirational goal of where to get to, it's a multi-year journey to get there. Just like last year at this time, they announced a security cloud, right? They announced it last year. Proof point one was XDR at RSA. Proof point two is SSE this year. And you know, let's see as they continue to get there. They, they're, you know, the the vision statement of it's protected, it's connected, right? There's a lot that has to go into getting there, but it's a step on the way there. One follow up, and then John, I want to get your take. Yeah. So, so they they to me they announced okay, they got a security cloud. I call it the security super cloud. They've got the 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 networking cloud. They kind of got the full stack observability cloud. Yeah. Do those things have to come together for them to get an A from you? I don't think they have to come together, but there certainly has to be interoperability between them, right? And they, it has to look like, well I suppose your term of super cloud yeah. actually is the right one. Yeah. So those are separate clouds and then that would look like one logical super cloud to the customer. So if I want to be able to add a, uh, add a new branch, I need networking, I need security, I need observability, those would all get delivered via one cloud delivery platform even though they're separate clouds. What grade would you give Cisco? So far, well, day um, two here. He's calling balls and strikes. He knows a little bit more of the details on the, what's shipping and what's not. From my standpoint, I give him an, an A minus. I'll tell you why. Because to, for them even to do this is Herculean, to come together yeah. as a team. So, and I've seen them for 13 years up close and it's always been kind of like a, there's like fiefdoms of people in the company, like they guy run this. Remember when Geckler was here, he's like, oh, service providers, and you know, all these sacred cows. That's just, they grew the business. One of them was the most valuable company for a long time. So Cisco had that legacy. It was, a, it was an aircraft carrier. It was hard to move, real quick. And so, the and There's fact, a lot of technical debt here. A lot of technical yeah. debt. So the fact that they are aligned, okay, is huge. Okay, and plus, the, the presentations were spot on. The strategy was genius. It hung together. I thought, I thought the idea of a security cloud, and, and notice how they had network plus security. They didn't say data, no, there was no data conversation. Just security, which is data driven, obviously, but network and security, those are smart pillars to build on. You embed that into everything else, that might rise up those other divisions. And I think Tom Gillis' group has huge upside right now. No if data, they, you think that's a, a, a gap, a blind spot, I think, or is it I think just... They don't, I don't think they know yet what that means for them, other than data's involved. For example, a lot of their AI successes, I thought, was not AI, AI wash at all. In fact, this is probably the only event I've been to, besides an Amazon event, where AI wasn't washed. It was actually legit develop, development. They, they showed use cases where AI could be used for obvious network configuration stuff that's obvious, we know. And then they had a product that they built, they the SOC, um, assistant, whatever they called it. That was something that came out AI, of AI. AI and then they SOC, yeah. SOC, whatever it was called. Uh, and then they had the Defend Multi Cloud Defender. So you can see them already producing fruit from that AI tree. So that's not bullshit as far as I'm concerned. So, so I was looking for that check, they passed that test. So we're going to give them a B plus, because I'll take Zs plus John <laughs> divided by two. You know, take, the, take that, so good, solid B plus. Yeah, so but the management, so team, the management team is solid. Jonathan yes. Davidson did an amazing job on his keynote. I thought he hit a home run, because he has the networking piece, and he connected a lot of dots. They didn't talk about silicon, which I hope they, they would have. I thought Liz laid out a great thing. I was not a big fan of the quantum. I would have liked to see cloud native up there instead, uh, instead of that, and, and uh, outtake as the lead. 
uh, there. I think that's more important than quantum relative to the thing. But I like quantum because of implications security. Yeah, I, I think yeah, that's a big uh, So, there. so I want to come back to that. But a, but a couple of standouts that, that you've talked about. Meraki and Thousand Eyes and AppD. AppD, you've always said, is sort of an under, underperforming asset. They could be doing much more with that. Meraki obviously is a, a key to the networking cloud. Yeah. Um, and then Thousand Eyes is threaded throughout. What's your take on those three assets? Well, Mer I mean Meraki. <laughs> that, that may be, the other than Catalyst, the best acquisition this company's ever made. It gave them the cloud platform. Uh, it, I think Meraki's core fundamental belief is ease of use. Everything should be easy. In fact, I remember, uh, you know, when they rolled out uh, network assurance, they didn't charge for it because their philosophy is, why should we charge our car customers to troubleshoot problems that we're having, yeah. right? And so, you know, Meraki is the mindset I, I, is awesome. Yeah, yeah, I, I love Meraki that way. Um, I, the, uh, Thousand Eyes is a great product, and in fact, it was a very well-timed acquisition because they bought it right before the SD WAN wave hit, and so it does internet troubleshooting. But that didn't really matter a decade ago because you didn't use the internet for corporate networks. Right. But today you do because of SD-WAN. So they, they hit that inflection point nicely. I'd like to see them take Thousand Eyes and take those agents and deploy them everywhere. Put them on Juniper routers, put them on Arista switches, right? Make Thousand Eyes the de facto troubleshooting tool for the internet. I don't know if they'll do that, but yeah. at least. Yeah, give I'd, it away. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't give it away, I'd, I'd license it. Uh, but I'd certainly make yeah. it available to That's everybody. an interesting, I mean, yeah. there's, we've, we've talked about sort of, you know, Cisco on Cisco and using the Oracle analogy, yeah. right? What would Oracle do, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, would, they probably would But Oracle's a lock-in, and I don't think Cisco wants to be a lock-in. Right, no, right, right. right. Yeah. So to your point, they're more likely to do something like that yes. than say an Oracle. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. But it's harder to do, network traffic is hard. Databases, I mean, it's hard too, but it's like, do you optimize <laughs> the database is definitely You can hard. engineer that <laughs> with compute. Well, that's what in Oracle a, was. They were, they were a, an engineered systems company. If you bought everything Oracle, it worked well together. Cisco, because they are the network, the reality is people are going to run Zoom on it, Teams on it, people are going to run different applications on it. So they have to almost by default be a lot more open to allow other things to run on top of it. And that's really more yeah. the true definition of a platform where you can argue Oracle's not really a platform, they're just an engineered systems company. The, the, I, um, the line by J2 was multi-cloud economics with no cloud lock-in. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought, by the way, I thought, shifting gears a little bit, I thought the security announcements were really strong. Yes. You just had Tom Gillis on, uh, super articulate, really understands sort of that, that business. And look okay, at, to me, you, you and I talked about this, Zias, the, the leading security vendor has, I don't know, maybe low single digit share, yeah. it, it, notwithstanding Microsoft, because they're just so big, but, but I mean, it's wide open, and there's no reason Cisco can't be very, very strong in that business. You've made this point, John, about bringing networking and security together, coming at it from a networking posture. That should really give Cisco, yeah. you would think, a leg up. Yeah, and I, I told them that I think they have a path to a trillion dollar valuation if they can lock in their install base with network and security and bring their install base like Microsoft did with 365, which is basically Office they threw in the cloud and called it cloud, and then they, everyone stayed with Microsoft. And why, why would you switch? So I think the switching costs of a customer with Cisco is really high, even though they might experience some stuff. So they have a good kind of lock-in, not technical lock-in, but they got a customer Switching cost lock-in. The cost to switch is more than the cost of the alternative. It's the operational disconnect, the tearing down the networks. So I would definitely take that over, bulk up security, make collaboration follow security in terms of like the pecking order, because you can get faster revenue with security than collaboration. Well, we what? talked about this last week. Security is the single biggest needle moving opportunity for this company because they're a, a relative minority shareholder in a massive market where networking is a massive market but they're the majority shareholder, right? And so if if they can, uh, I'm not saying they're ever going to be able to have security match their market share in networking, but if they can even get a, a part dent. of the way there, <laughs> right? I mean, the, the and I think the security multi-cloud opportunity is massive. The thing with the hyperscalers is they do security well, but they only do it within the world. AWS security tools don't work on Azure, and their security tools don't work in GCP, right? And so somebody's got to act as that uh, abstraction layer that can help you secure a multi-cloud world, and there's no reason VMware's to going for it. Yeah, but they're not really, I mean, everything's tied to the VMware 
all those different VMware clouds, right? They're not going to take their VMware security tools and have them work if you're not using VMware Cloud Foundation. To, to no, me. but they got half a million customers, yeah. and that's where well, their, so their advantage is. But, but I want to go back to something you said, so the trillion dollar baby question, John, John and I've been sort of, are you, it's kind are of pie. You're a stock kind of, analyst now? Well, it's yeah. kind of pie in the sky, but, yeah. but, I'm but, a you about, analyst. But, but you think about the two companies that, that are you know, poster children for complete turnarounds is Apple and Microsoft. Yes. Right, and so Cisco's a $200 billion market cap company, so we're talking about a 5X. What are the levers? You're talking about security. Yeah, I, yeah, think, I, I think there's something un under the covers with AI, that you know, somebody's going to invent something. You know, why not Cisco? Why, why? They've got the resources, they've got the, but well, it, it's going to take a visionary well, my, to say, my, my, here's where we're going. My, I'll, a, I'll, a, I'll a let you. Adela or a Steve Jobs like, and maybe, maybe Chuck's ready, I, I don't know. Here's the a, here's a problem, then I'll let you answer. I think that the, the subtraction layer, I'll say this very carefully, it's going to be difficult for an incumbent who owns a lot of the gear underneath it to own the abstraction layer, unless they move very quickly and take it fast. Why? And You're networking it. super cloud. Why couldn't Why couldn't Cisco add create the new the next gen cloud out well, to the edge? Well, then that's just their thing. That's not an in, independent abstraction layer for data. Who does the well, data to your version? Point though, before you got to have apps on top. Are, of it. are there special layers? Just one for data, one for network, one for security, or is it one third party new company that emerges and says, "Whoa, whoa." Uh, you, Cisco, you, you can't have it. VMware, you can't have it. Whoever else, incumbent, it's got to be something new and de facto. What That's one scenario. Well, I, I do think it's going to fall into, security is going to be a big part of them growing their valuation. Uh, and, and I think there's a legitimacy to what Cisco's trying to do. It, their whole tagline, if it's connected, it's secured, uh, isn't, it isn't just a tagline. I mean, it's, it's a good. real thing. Um, <laughs> We're connecting everything in this world. I mean, cars are connected, everything in our house is connected. To enable anything. Yeah, I mean, and a big vision. Cisco owns <laughs> connectivity, and security is becoming a game of analytics now. This Security is no longer, can I spin signatures out as soon as malware hits? It's can I, as soon as I find a threat, can I do I have the network data and the network it. telemetry to understand where the, the breach came from, how it emanated, and how do I fight against it, and who's got more network data than Cisco? Yeah, and fast, by the way, too. Yeah, and so I think their AI game actually is in, in uh, automated remediation, both in network troubleshooting and more importantly in security, because that's going to give customers the confidence that I can deploy Cisco technology faster and not worry about the security breaches, because even if I am breached, I'm going to have the right tools in place to fight it, and I'm going to have the zero trust architecture in place to make sure that, that a customer who's breached, uh, a user that's breached isn't going to create a larger blast radius than it should. And if you use, and th their, their goal is, if it's all Cisco, that it's got to create that one plus one equals five effect, right? And so the, everything's there for them, they just got to put it together. My take on this is the vision of, of connected everything yeah. to enable anything. I mean, that's a trillion dollar vision. Yeah. I mean, that, that says to me, okay, no lack of TAM, Right, there's certainly no lack of resources. I mean, you go back 2000, when was the cloud? 2006, 2007? 2008, yeah. Okay, when was S3 announced? Oh, six, I think, yeah. but whatever. Yeah. But, you, but you look at IBM, they had, they spent more on R&D and had more resources than Amazon. Than a book company. Microsoft, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, exactly. So, <laughs> so a company like Cisco, if it puts its mind to it, could create the next big thing, and that, that vision is a, a massive total available market that could support a trillion dollar oh. business. Well, but I, don't, I mean, I don't know what that thing is. Well, it could be, that, this outtake is an interesting proposition. We're going to see if it's real or not. And we had them on uh, earlier, we had VJoy on. You mean Outshift? Out, what's it called? What's it called? Outshift, outshift, Outshift. Outshift, Outtake, Redshift, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> outshift. Blue Pill. <laughs> I think I took the Blue Pill. <laughs> Open Shift? <laughs> Everything's shifting. The Cube Shift. So, but that, they're putting all the, I won't say misfit toys in the island. But, well, but that's but, what we thought early yeah. on, was really the misfit toys, but I think it is kind of Liz has done a good job it is, of it is actually making sense It is sense kind of the of island of misfit toys because they have pure play focus. I mean, look at the management team. It's focused. Jonathan, J2, Liz, all of them, the people that in their team, they're focused like a laser for these clouds. And I think it's a great idea to put everything, but it's funded properly and can they develop anything? That's the question I want to see because they're at, they're at, they're at KubeCon, they're at these events, they're doing quantum. Can that thing get new businesses going? If they can use that vehicle as a test kitchen? Are you I, under NDA for tomorrow's announcement? 
Uh, yeah, probably. It's yeah. LLM, all right, so yeah. we shouldn't yeah. talk yeah. about that. But but I don't know what's coming. So, but there's something in LLM yeah. that's coming tomorrow. Right? But I do there's think, though, that we are closer than you think to a world where literally everything's connected. And I think if you look at all the work Cisco's under the car manufacturers, people joke, go, why are you putting WebEx in a car? No one's going to use that. Oh, well, that's an awesome yeah, idea. Yeah, it, it is. In fact, uh, if you go down over there, they, they got the Ford pickup truck with WebEx in it. And there's a lot of use cases from military to field service, you know, things like that. But more importantly, it's the connectedness that's important, right? And so, if you remember last year, Ford CEO was here. And he said, for the first time ever in the history of Ford, they can drive new features and innovation into a finished product. They've never been able to do that before, and it's the connectedness that's allowing that. And so, literally everything's being connected, and that creates all these different entry points. And so that's why I think the, the security opportunity for Cisco, in a lot of ways, if they had had the strategy five years ago, 10 years ago, I don't know if it works, because it was a game of point products, but the market's moved to where yeah. Businesses are now network centric, and so then you know their only challenge, I, I think, is legacy mind, 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 mind. mindset and some process. Yeah, so yeah but simplicity solves some of that. Yes. I mean, it's a mandate. I mean, well, it, no, there's it, some it, technical it, issues. Like we brought up last night, Wi-Fi versus 5G. You asked the question in the um, analyst Q and A the day before about Wi-Fi and 5G. Yeah. Okay. Last night at the hockey game, we were at the Vegas Knights game. Wi-Fi was worse than the 5G. So now that's a technical issue of if I'm in a car, I'm in a moving device, I should be able yeah. to. That's it's always the case though, you're turning off Wi Fi to get to. But I shouldn't have to. Yes. Right. right? That's a case where it should do it, the device should do it automatically. And, and all, but I, I was thinking more like if we go talk to a lot of large enterprise, security teams and network teams are still separate. Right, and so can Cisco serve both sides of that and then bring them together when they can, and yeah. that's why there's a lot of legacy mindset in the customer base that yeah. uh, I, I think will eventually fall. I mean, it happens with every industry, but I do think Cisco can serve the needs of now, but also pivot yeah. when they well, need to. Well, especially in the networking business, right? Because, I mean, you, you think about, you know, storage is different, right? Nobody's provisioning LUNs anymore, but network's different. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe, maybe somebody, well, if mean, you are, you got to get a new job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if there's a blind spot in Cisco, uh, besides the legacy of the customers and the, the dogma or mindset internally dogma, is that they got to be more thinking about the applications that are coming. And I think what the AI is showing us is that there's going to be new developers coming on board, writing apps faster, to your point earlier, that are going to sit on top of the network. And that the connectedness is going to be, they're going to have a huge value to provide an app developer. So I think one thing that I think their blind spot might be is the impact of the developer surge in cloud native, open source right now. And the stuff that we're looking at right now, it's, it's faster than I've ever seen. And they're moving the market, they're moving trends. So they could be, have a product coming out and going to market that could be completely stunted at birth if they're not lined up with the developer community because at the top of the stack, if they're not enabling the right features, that's what I think I'm, I'm sensing that I don't think they're aware of that feature enough. Well, I'm starting to really buy into this notion of real-time data apps. Yeah. In other words, where you've got data-centric apps where the business logic is embedded in the data, not the reverse. So uh, the, the analogy we like to use is, you know, a digital twin of your business, like an Uber for your enterprise. Yeah. So people, places, things, ETAs, destinations, those are all data elements that, from which you're going to build apps. Uber built an app in real time. Everything's coherent. That's the future, and that's going to be over a distributed network which is going to presumably drive a ton of demand yeah. for the plumbing. We're, everything in this world is becoming more dynamic and more distributed, and that favors Cisco disproportionately, right? Yeah, so. but so the, to John's point, will they, and do they even have to move up the stack to get to that trillion dollar baby? We're, no, they're not talking about a trillion dollar baby, but that's sort of my pie in the sky. But, but a company like Cisco, you, sh you should see them return to the sort of prominence of, remember they used to be the most valuable company on the yeah, planet. Yeah, because of the network. And, and because of the network, and, you know, the dot com boom, and there's no reason they can't get back there just like Apple got back yeah. there and just like Microsoft got back there. I think Zeus' no. argument about the connectivity is that I think the, the most glaring, obvious thing that Cisco yeah. should be like. I mean, what's more important than network today? Nothing. Right? Well, if you don't have connectivity, I don't care how good your iPhone is, it, it's, it's a brick, right? So. You know, and they're, they are the connectivity company, so. You know, it's funny, you said Warren Buffett, I was listening to him, he loves Apple because, because if you had two cars, you'd give up your car, your second car, before you give up your iPhone. But if that iPhone's not connected, like you said, you'd throw it away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and pretty more, soon it's, you it's won't give, your, your car's going to be connected all yeah, the time, it's, right? So, <laughs> it's, yeah, right, it's Metcalf's yeah. law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. All right, anything else you, you want to lay on us for impressions of this week? Uh, no, I just think it's, uh, this is probably the, 
the, the management team, at your point, is outstanding here. And I think this is the first time in a long time, maybe back to the early 2000s, where the management team's actually all in sync and they all understand. Uh, you know, because back in, back in the day when Cisco was a young company, everybody was focused on building the internet, right? Yeah, yes. And I think now, this whole management team understands it's this movement to cloud. these super clouds, if you want yeah. to call it that. Well, that, we do. Yeah. We do. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, and the, and the ability to, um, to leverage those to create more value from the overall Cisco platform. Uh, I think everyone is on board with that, where that hasn't really been the case in the past. I think they had a lot of political fiefdoms here for revenue and things like that, but. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we I mean, joke about SuperCloud a lot, but there's meaning to it. Yeah, no, this, no, this show validates yes, SuperCloud. Absolutely. Yeah. This show validates that it's mainstream because Cisco is a canary in the coal mine. They're not the leaders, they're great on messaging. But they're a bellwether, you're no, right. When they launch, when they right. launch stuff on stage, it's not because of hype, because their customers are not the most early adopters because they run networks. No yeah. networking guy goes first. <laughs> yeah. you know, they're like locked in, they're operational. They're not going to like take a flyer on some. And one of the themes here too around multi-cloud was the, the reality is customers aren't ditching on-prem holistically for cloud. People have asked me, do I see a day where everything's in the cl public cloud? Maybe I'll be dead <laughs> by the time that happens. It's a long way away. There, you know, we were at Dell Tech World, right? They sell a ton of servers. Cisco sells a ton of servers still. And it's because people need workloads. You, you put the workloads where it makes the most sense, right? And uh, as long as the world remains that kind of complicated nature where I'm running some things at the edge, some things in the cloud, some things on-prem, right? Th that favors the more and more connectivity to tie those things together. And then you need to secure it. I think that's their insertion point. Yeah, I, I mean, think the multi-cloud security piece could be, it will be massive for them. I, I yeah. think that's really their big opportunity. And they're not I alone agree. going after that, I obviously. Agree. I mean, yeah, well, they, see, they can build on top of their network. It's hard if you don't own the network, though. That's the thing, right? You so nailed it, Z. There's not another network it's vendor. It's easier if you do own the network, yes. I guess. And there's the not another network making. vendor that's got the security chops and arguably there's not a security event that's got the network chops, right? So. It's interesting, I mean, Chuck said it's a complicated world, to your point, supply chains, yeah. war, data sovereignty, and AI just can make it more complicated and so does Edge. Yeah. Last word, John. Dave, I want to ask you, you wrote the post, we got a lot of flack. On one hand, it was our audience thought we could be more critical of, you guys could be more critical of Cisco, and Cisco felt it was a little bit critical, although you, they proved you wrong or right, or whatever you want to look at it. Um, I heard an analyst saying, I've been covering the cloud for 10 years. I mean, how long have we been covering private cloud? We've been doing private cloud <laughs> yeah, since, two, what, what private year? Private cloud, hybrid cloud. Well, ever since they started calling on <laughs> private cloud. True, true private cloud. hybrid cloud. Yeah. I mean, I mean you know, what's your take? I mean, we've been there, done that. Uh, your post, you feel like uh, you got it right? You I guys think, got it right? I, I do, I think we let the data inform. It's not like we just threw out a bunch of opinions. First of all, Zias has deep expertise and historical knowledge in this business. I've been around a long time. We had ETR data to lean on. And we didn't just you know, make this stuff up. I mean, we talked to customers and you know, we got a lot of experience yeah. here. So I think, yes, I think that we did get it right. And I think Cisco got it right yes. in what they announced today. Yeah. It was a very good set of announcements. Yeah. And what the thing I liked about it, it wasn't a lot of shiny new toys. It wasn't, here's 85 new switches. In fact, there was very little new uh, product. It's a firewall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the other, the announcements were yeah. largely around that concept of yeah. simplicity. And Chuck stood on stage and talked we need yeah. to make things simple for our customers. Right? And that's what so. a platform company yes. does. I talked to a few people in the hallway and they were talking about your post and the comments were, um, eight out of 10 were um, very, very positive. They read it, it helped, helped them understand the keynote better, which by the way, that was you know, a great service there. And the other 20% felt neutral, they thought it was just solid. You know? So no Good. negative sentiment at all from people reading the post. Yeah. So that's, know, the kind hey. of that's the kind of content we want. Uh, exactly, I mean, I think that's why I love collaborating with you, see us, especially when you come to the studio. Yeah. I hope we can do more. Yeah, well, you, your two studios are close to where both my places are. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, thanks, for, help. no problem. Yeah, thanks <laughs> for helping us unpack uh, the day two, I guess, but day one of keynotes. We're back tomorrow, G2 Patel's coming on, Jonathan Davidson, We've got a full lineup. So, thank you, and thank, thank you, you for thank watching. You. This is theCUBE, we're out. Day one, Cisco Live 2023 from the Mandalay Bay. <laughs>